everyone has a story and you certainly do and your story is slowly coming out and as each of your cookbooks are coming oh now the story is something totally different it's not has nothing to do with that story my story meaning that where that whether i said that that meant is like what's your fucking story like yeah. i used to hang out i used to hang out with my friends and i remember always like going into the conversation like blaming someone for my life not going where it needed to go yep. and i kept finding that i was becoming repetitive and you know dr george of course is so influential in my life but um he he kept saying well what's your fucking story and i'm like <laughs> my story and then i was like well wait a minute that is my story i'm so freaking depressing why would I do that to my poor friends every time I see them? Oh, yeah, I got such a pain in the ass, and I, my house is a mess, and I can't move forward. Oh, my ass is hurting me. My legs are hurting me. No, they don't want to hear that shit. Nobody wants to hear your bullshit. You know, people want to say hi and, like, how are you doing? And um, I'm doing great, you know, and uh, what are the positive things so that they can uplift themselves because there's so much shit going on around us. We don't need any more negative stuff. <laughs> Okay, so what's yeah. the point there? Everyone has a so, story. So just stop, stop it. Stop your storytelling because nobody really wants to hear it. Nobody wants to hear why you're not moving forward. So get your ass up and just take care of business. You just got to do it. Like Nike says, do it. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> it's like sometimes you just have to get up and do it. You know, sometimes I remember like, not that I remember, it was like, sometimes I get up really in a lot of pain. And I'm like, you know, let's not start out like this. You know, I go and do a little stretch. I do my little meditation thing. I bring myself inward. I'm like, all right, what are we doing today? Because we're not going to just sit on the couch and do nothing. Because before I would just sit home in the morning, you know, I'm a stay at home mom. I was taking care of my health. And the day would just go away. And by the time I knew it, I was like watching all this stupid shit on TV that didn't make any sense. I'd be doing nothing that needed to be taken care of. And then I would just go pick up my kid. Yeah. Uh, how depressing. Way of numbing out. Yeah. And how depressing is that? And, you know, Very. it's sad. And I kind of know someone like that right now, but I don't want to mention that in the book. But, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, I know one person like that right now and I feel bad for her. And, you know, there's a few people actually I know, but one of them in particular. And it was just, she reminded me of me. It was like looking at my old self in the mirror. And I was like, wow, you know, it was, it was, it was very um, sad, yeah. you know, to see someone that was in my place. And, you know, they've become, and I, I know exactly where she's at. I mean, she's living in a house that's very cluttered. She doesn't know where to start because she's in pain, Yeah. you know, and she has so much to do. You don't know where to go, you know, with the whole thing. And that's how my, my declutter person kind of helped me. I guess she was yeah. expensive, but she, and you know what? She didn't start me. I started myself because I remember looking and reading up about decluttering and i said you know what demi just 15 minutes 15 minutes on the fucking timer in the in the kitchen how hard is 15 minutes and it's kind of sounds like my other book right but just take 15 minutes put it on the timer and just grab one spot and that's what i would do and then if i could still go i would take another 15 minutes you know and then i would just uh, tackle things and it started just disintegrating because you know with those five years when my family was sick and they needed me i stopped taking care of everything not just me but my house too so i was not home i would go out early come back late and everything would just pile up bills i had bills oh my god for like five years of bills that needed to be filed because i used to save everything and my declutter lady came and she's like all right here you go through this shit now and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? What am I paying you for? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and she's like, well, if you don't do it, then you won't, you won't learn how to continue doing this. So I don't want you saving every little piece of paper. She's like, and you, if you look around there, there's actually, this is good. My cleaning lady came and she was so excited. She's like, I'm trying to see your dining room table. So this is the only thing that's left right now. And I am bringing this. It's all my studies for my gut health course. Oh, yeah. 
I'm keeping them, so I'm going to have them put into like a binder or something. So I'm going to bring them to Staples and have them fix it for me because oh, no. I want to start talking about that. Yeah, right. Anyway, so yeah, and it's not your parents. Yeah, That's so really part talking. of getting out of your own way is doing the whole like decluttering thing because you can. It is. It is, and, and it's things in your way. You can put fat in your way. You can right. put yes. clutter in your right. way. What else can you put? in your way shopping but you could shop say that you have no energy but you know the yeah. reason that you have no energy is because you're just sitting around doing nothing yeah. my son hasn't been to the gym for like a week because his trainer went away i got him a trainer that was his gift this year and <clears throat> i got him a trainer instead of going to karate because he doesn't want to go to karate anymore so i said you know what i'll get you a trainer for two times a week but then you have to promise to go to the gym the other two days a week so he's like, okay, I'll do it. So his trainer didn't uh, go to the gym for like a week and he went away on vacation for Thanksgiving. And then between Thanksgiving, he ate a little wrong, whatever. And he's feeling it, which is great for me because like he's 14. So the fact that he's feeling the difference, I'm excited about that. Oh, very. Yeah. 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 That's cool because he's in his body. So that's a good thing. Yeah. And so, um, so when I brought him back to the gym yesterday, he was so freaking excited. And he's like, mom, what a difference, man. I feel so good. And I said, that's what you're supposed to feel like every day. So you see, so today he was, yes. And he's like, I really like when, when I go to the gym. I said, well, then you need to start going more often. I said, so by yourself, I said, you just let me know what time you want to go and we'll, I'll drop you off. Yeah. So, and back and, to loving yourself or not loving yourself because we don't right. feel good. And then like there's that like, guilt a lot of people have a guilt like um you know i shouldn't be the one alive even if like other people have died like why me why am i alive and they're guilty that they're alive so then you know they don't deserve to feel good or eat right or whatever and back to just focusing on self it is so depressing um i found that the hardest thing when my health was crashing and and that focusing on self so i could like stay alive you know that was so depressing. I absolutely hated that time of my life. Well, you know, it's really weird is that as I started to do that, you know, because this is a Greek mentality again, or maybe just a woman mentality, I don't know, but I felt like I was becoming very selfish, but yeah. I felt like I also needed to become selfish because I didn't want my kid to experience the loss of his mother at such a young age because I know how that fucking feels. Yep. And I didn't want him thinking that it was, you know, a cop out like yep. my, like I feel or, you know, still to this day feel like, you know, my mom just gave up. I don't want him to know that. I want him to know that I'm a strong person. And as you could see in the letter, he thinks that already. And I want him to know that, you know what, even on your hardest fucking day, you should get your ass up and go and take care of yourself. That's the yeah. first thing. And the only thing that's very important. I don't care if your bills are not paid. If you don't take care of yourself, you can't pay that fucking bill anyway. <laughs> exactly. Anna Gonzalez book, Selfishly Second. It's just like, it's right there, you know? It's selfish to not make yourself first. No, yeah, it is. We're not trained that way. I don't care what culture you're in, you know? And there's and more, you know, um, community family it's the family that's not important i mean yeah the family is more important than the individual there is all that cultural stuff too it, i just i don't know are there cultures where where they get to focus on themselves and they're encouraged to i don't know well i talk i have a massage therapist and that massage therapist we talk she is from uh, where the hell is she from poland she's polish and when I talk to her, it sounds like they're more into, and maybe it's just her family, I don't know, but she says that they don't do that in their culture. Okay. They, they, they literally take care of them and their immediate family that's whatever they got married to and have children, yeah. and then the rest come. I'm excited because there's so many Greek families that really are going to get a lot out of this. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Wonderful client potential for you to help them further than just a book. Yeah, exactly.